Yo, what's going on world? It's your boy Marcus Bowles coming to you live yet again. Get ready to give you some insights to these well pillars. Hey, for those who may be new, trying to figure out why do we do what we do, simply put, money don't make you rich. And today, we're going to remain in our mastery series and today's topic is going to be treasure your heart part two. So we're going to stay on the offense side of the well pillars of real estate. And on the defensive side, we're going to stay on talking about building your net worth and your personal lines of credit. Hey, but before we go further, because we can't sit here and not practice what we preach, but what we're doing, we're preaching what we're practicing. And that is the What Pillars Ministry is about three things. That is taking biblical principles and cultivating habits of, first of all, kingdom giving, second of all, kingdom stewardship, and third of all, kingdom protection. So as I always open up, I want to thank you for investing in yourself. I want to thank you for showing up, taking this information, applying it to your life as you see and need fit and helping you go to the next place. That's that's what it's all about. Regardless of where wherever you are at financially, economically, socially, wherever it, do, it doesn't matter because we always want to stay in the learning mindset, the growing mindset. And that is one of the reasons that we were able to create and birth the Well Pillars ministry. See, if it would not have been for you know me and the people that I keep around me not having that, that growth, that kingdom giving mindset, none of this will be happening. And in all honesty, you know, we could have kept all of this information that we're sharing to ourselves or just to a small group of people. But we know that our purpose, our mission, our vision is much bigger than that, much bigger than that. We are about giving, we're about stewardship, and we're about protection. So again, I thank you for showing up, supporting us, help us achieving our mission and our goals and our objectives that have been given to us. And I pray that we are doing the same. So with that being said, as I always say, you know, if somebody is coming to mind when you are watching this information, all you got to do is one of three things. And really, you can do all of them, which is like, share, subscribe, and comment. All of those things will help more people get this information. It will help more people practice the kingdom principle of giving. See, giving doesn't have to always be financially and monetary, right? This is one of the things that I noticed you know, versus the king's way and culture way is that a lot of people think giving has to be financially or monetary. So you can give with your time. You can give with the, your information. You can give with your wisdom. You can give with your experience. You can give so many different ways. And, and of course, that's another thing that we're uh, about here at the Well Pillars is breaking these cultural mindset and norms and boundaries, right? See, you can give and give and give every day in multiple and various ways. So again, if somebody comes to mind, that is the Holy Spirit moving on you, helping you be a electronic evangelist and sharing this information, liking this information. That's gonna help us get higher in these technology algorithms. When you comment, you're also connecting with your kingdom brothers and sisters. And that's another thing that it's about. See, this platform is much bigger than really just the information that we're sharing. It's about bringing us together to help each other achieve our missions, our visions, our purpose. I've, I've heard people comment and tell me that they connected with people from various states, various cities and markets, and now they're doing business together, or now that they're working on different projects together. See, it's about more than just what we're receiving right here is all about how you take the information and how you apply it. So with that being said, probably now on the screen somewhere, you're seeing the organizations that we are giving to. And I ask you, if this information is helping you, I ask that you help us help them. See, again, kingdom principles are about giving. One of the principles is about giving. So we research, we develop, we connect, we communicate, we have conversation with many different organizations, not only just here in the United States, but internationally, because we understand that our reach is not just local, it's not just, it's global. We are globally connected 
as a society. We are globally connected as a community. We are globally co connected as a people, right? So I ask that you participate and helping other people achieve their missions and goals. Again, that's another thing about being able to deposit into people's lives. You see that you may have, you know, unlimited amount of resources and may be looking for something or somewhere uh, to deposit them. The Well Pillars Ministry is about helping you achieve your goals, your missions, and supporting other people. So again, I ask if this is adding any type of positive, uplifting advancement to your life, to your family, to your finances, to your mental state, to your well-being, that you help us achieve our goal as well. Because again, we can't do any of this without your support, without your contributions, and without finding and connecting with more people that are about uplifting the kingdom. All right, so there is now, as we move into our, our actual stewardship part of the, of, of the message. And, and again, this is key because you really more or less necessarily can't give in some aspects or ways unless you have been able to deposit, reap what you have sown, and then being able to bless someone else. So we always have a scripture. So as, as we say, we are we're backed by kingdom and biblical principles helping us move forward financially and being able to have more education and literacy when it comes to our finances and when it comes to growing as kingdom citizens. So on today, we're going to be talking about scripture, Matthew 6, 21. So this is part two of what we've already discussed on another, on another uh, video topic, which is treasure your heart part one. So we're going to stick with the same scripture because I wanted to dive more into, in, into depth about how this, this scripture can translate into some other areas of life. So for those who may have missed it, I encourage you to go back and watch that content. Go back and watch that video. It was powerful and it's going to make a whole lot more sense as we're now watching number two. So for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Again, that's Matthew 6, uh, verse, tw verse 21. So on the offensive side, like I said, we're going to stick with real estate. And on the defensive side, we're going to stick with personal lines of credit. In the last video, I touched on the different ways about home equity lines of credit or HELOC or um, actual uh, home equity uh, lines of credit, which is more like just the lump sum of cash. But on this one, we're going to move into really what this is doing for your net worth. Again, what this is doing for your net worth. So we said in the last video, your, your personal house should, should be seen as an investment and not a possession. That's key. Go back and watch the, the, the part one so you can really pick up on, on what that nugget is. But I, I'll, I'll gaze over it real quick. See, the, the thing that you want to recognize and understand is about a mentorship. Everything that you are you're accumulating that you are investing in should be looked at as assets. Your home is an asset and it's definitely going to translate into what I talk about today on the defensive side when it comes to your net worth. So again, your home should be looked at as an asset. It should be looked at as an asset and not a possession because when you possess things, those are opportunities for them to be taken from you. As, 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 as elementary as that sounds, it translates really in your heart, which is what we're talking about in the scripture, is that when you attach your heart to a possession, if I was to take this tablet away and I attach my heart to it because I looked at it as a, as a, 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 a possession and not an investment, not a tool, my heart walks out with that tool. My heart walks out with that possession. But again, if I look at it as a tool and as an asset, hey, I mean, I care that that tool, that that asset is not, not longer in my possession, but I have protected it in a way to where it can come back to me tenfold. So that's why we had that third pillar of what our mission is about here with the Well Pillars is about protection as well. So you need to give. That is a definitely kingdom principle. You need to be a good steward, a good shepherd of accumulating resources that God has blessed you with. That is key. But then you also need to protect those investments as well. All right. So en enough on that point, because, again, this is this is part two. So here's here's what I really want you to, to lock in. on. 
So we talked about the home, but for a lot of people, they're, they're, especially as we continue to grow as a society and coming out of the pandemic, you know, really things in the marketplace and the place of business have shifted. So this is what I want you to catch on the offensive side. Not only are these, these principles about possessions are, um, are, are directly connected to your home, but think about your business. Think about in, in businesses and in, in those locations if you have them. Think about your rental property or rental properties if you have them. Think about your, your cars, your vehicles, things that you are using for your motor transportation for your business. All of them can have the same effect if you don't look at them as possessions, but you look at them as assets. So let's just take somebody who has, has a business, right? They, they, are, they, they may own or in the process of buying that particular location, maybe a brick and mortar or office space. They also may have a rental property or two, and they may have company vehicles as well as their personal vehicles. So the, the, when you look at them again as assets, all of those, all the values of those, you know, four to five to six things are now elevating your net worth, which is what we're going to talk about on the defensive side. So again, shift your mind from possessions and look at just about everything you have as, as assets, as things that, that you have been blessed with, that you have been given to be a good what? Steward, to be a good shepherd over. So when you change your mind from being in possession, if you lose one of those vehicles, if you lose one of your rental properties, if you lose a business location, again, your heart, your treasure does not walk out with it. Instead, you knew that coming here with the well, uh, well pillars of principles and, and, and biblical uh, practices that we're teaching you, you knew how to protect those assets. Even your life is an asset. Even your kids and, and your spouses and the people in your organization, all and when you have that mindset that things are, are assets, things that have been given to you, you just have a different way about protecting them, way about stewarding over them, and also even how you give to them. See, if you didn't have that mindset, you wouldn't, you know, a lot of people invest in cars and spruce them up and look good. You wouldn't have a lot of different things, you know, as far as your business, your rental properties, investing in, into them because they are assets if you didn't have that mindset. So shifting over onto the defensive side, I'm going to quickly touch on what we said in part one, which is when you see your home as an asset, you then open your mind to being able to build your personal lines of credit as well as different lines of credit attached to those assets. All right, go back and watch one, uh, part one for more information. So here's what I want to want you to focus on. You should be focused on building your net worth and not obtaining possession. Catch that. Focus on building your net worth and not obtaining possessions. Now, I'm not saying go out here and be greedy. I'm not saying go out here and try to just get everything that you can possibly put your hands on. But what I am saying is everything that you come in contact with, that you have been blessed to be a steward over, is things that are being added to you to help you build your net worth. See, a lot of people don't understand what a personal net worth or a, a personal um, a, a net worth expense sheet is or asset sheet is. So I'm just going to keep it very simple. Let's think about it. Again, going back to one or two business, let's do two business locations. Let's do two rental properties and let's do uh, two B, uh, business vehicles and your personal vehicle. Just, we're just going to keep it right there. So those are seven assets that if you put on your net worth sheet because they all have value, you quickly right then and there could be at well over a million dollars in assets that you have been blessed to be a steward over. So if you take that information to a bank, and, and, and I'm talking to people who are either looking to uh, not only one, be entrepreneurs or are entrepreneurs, but also people looking to protect and save for the future, Right, because we know that we're not going to always be working. There is going to be a time we are in a prime time when we're able to work and get the most maximum value. But then there's also a time where we may start to decline, and we need to work smarter. Our assets need to be working smarter, not necessarily harder for for us. 
So again, when you take all of those things and you start adding them up and start taking that, that fact sheet to different investors, different banks, different lenders, different whatever, they see you as a kingdom person that can monitor and maintain and be a good steward over your resources, right? So if you ever wonder why, you know, how millionaires and people that are famous or whatever the case may be, it's not hard to be a millionaire. It really is not, especially on paper, especially on paper. It really, especially if you live in the state of California, some of these higher uh, net, uh, net value and net worth uh, real estate markets, easily between one or two properties, you could be considered a millionaire on paper. So again, it's about really understanding how these tools how these resources are working together. And of course, as I always leave you with, the thing that you want to understand is that you never, 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 never leverage your assets more than 40% of their value. In some cases, you can go more, but you really wanna make sure that you stay within that 40%. Now, if you go into, let's say like a real estate, a venture or real estate mindset, yes, you can go all the way up to 100%. But again, be careful about the different ways because you can do it as a line of credit, which is more like a big credit card or revolving line, or you can do it in a lump sum of whatever that asset is worth. But I would encourage you to start off at 40% so that you can learn because the other thing that as we get ready to close that I want to leave you with is that experience is a key principle about being a kingdom giver, a kingdom uh, a steward, as well as being able to protect your assets. Experience is a big key when it comes to these principles. All right, so there you have it. What I want to do as always is pray over the message, pray over you, pray over your family, pray over everything that we just accomplished right here in this time together today and that you go out and not only share, but you like, subscribe and comment and give as, as the kingdom citizens you are and that you have been called to do because that is helping you achieve your purpose. So Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to teach. We thank you, Lord God, to be able to have each other, to be able to give each other to each other, to help each other grow, to help each other increase the resources and the blessings and the purposes and the opportunities that you have put us here for. We want to live under an open heaven, Lord God. We want to achieve your, your goals, your objectives, your mission, your vision for our lives, Lord God. Move our selfish ways and desires as cultural will want us to believe out of the way and let us have our kingdom principles that you have ordained for us and that you have showed us in your practice and in your ways. We thank you for this, going out and touching your people and bringing more kingdom citizens back here on the Nexus. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. So as I always say, you have exactly what you say now. If you believe it now, it is yours to have right now today. The power of life and death is in the tongue, more importantly, in the mind. But first you, yes, you right there looking back at me, you got to believe in your heart. Take care, share, like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you back here with some friends on the next one.